Oh, baby, we are getting into that territory. It's only been a year. It's only been a year. Why are you making this video? It's only been a year. Well, I'm not the guy who's going out there and saying this. We are talking today about a prospect drafted by the Arizona Coyotes who had himself an appearance on a podcast wherein he says it. Not me, it's the other guy. And I'm obviously deflecting blame because I'm looking for an excuse to make this video, let's talk about the 2022 NHL entry draft and how, in the eyes of some people, the Montreal Canadiens should not have drafted Yuri Slavkovsky first overall. In fact, maybe they even should not have drafted Shane Wright. Let's talk today about the idea of Logan Cooley being the best player from this draft. Now, if you've been following the draft and its stories, you are aware of how everything went down in 2022 last year. Yuri Slavkovsky, big Slovak winger, was a lot better in his draft season than we all thought he would be. He was in the World Championships at the Olympic Games. He had a playoff stint with TPS in the Liga. He's a big dude, solid dude, and he had himself a very intriguing profile in 2022, which is why he got drafted first overall over Shane Wright. Wright, however, did not go second. He did not go third. He dropped to fourth overall. And the guy who went above Shane Wright, just one spot ahead, Arizona Coyotes draftee Logan Cooley, had himself a season for the ages after. Now, we've already made our few videos talking about how Cooley was so dominant in the NCAA. 60 points, 39 games played this upcoming year with Arizona. If he is their first-line center, which is not too out of the realm of possibility, he could legitimately challenge Connor Bedard for this year's Calder. He's a good player, and he's going to have a great NHL career. However, today we are talking about comments made by Maverick Lamaru. Yes, that's right. Maverick Lamaru is the big dude taken out of the 2022 NHL draft, 29th overall by the Arizona Coyotes, so also a Coyotes prospect. Part of the reason Lamaru was drafted this high is because he's six foot seven, 198. And I'm not going to make it seem like there aren't any other qualities to his game that project to being NHL caliber, but he's a guy that was drafted because he's big. Let's just say that. Lamaru had himself a podcast appearance on what's the show called here? Sans Restriction. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. It's it's French. Okay, my bad. Maverick Lamaru, right? He's from Quebec. This podcast is hosted by Kevin Raphael, and the transcript of what was said on the show was posted on 2TVA Sports. The article on TVA is going to be translated from French into English, and the podcast is also linked in the body of the piece. Logan Cooley is ahead of Slavkovsky, according to Maverick Lamaru. Link is in the description as well to the article. Let's take a look at what the body reads. The six foot seven giant defender of Drummondville said during an episode of the Sans Restriction podcast with Kevin Raphael that Logan Cooley is the best player in the draft. Lamaru naturally knows Cooley very well. They were both drafted by the Coyotes in the first round of 2022, and they rub shoulders at Desert Team Camp. Desert Team Development Camp. What in the world does that mean? Poor translation. We'll just chalk it up to that. In my opinion, Cooley is the best guy in the draft, Lamaru said without hesitation. He's going to play this year, and he's going to be amazing. The Quebecer went out there and had full praise for his American center counterpart with above-average vision of the game and who's capable of making plays. The way Cooley sees the game is on another level, Lamaru said. He finds everyone. He easily gave me three scoring chances at the last development camp. And that's pretty much it. That's all the article goes out there and talks about, essentially. There's a little bit more, a few extra comments that don't really add much. But Maverick Lamaru is going to be the first one on record to say it, that yeah, Logan Cooley is the best guy from this year's draft. And it's interesting because if you remember some of the discourse back from 2022, so just over a year ago, I remember in particular, it was actually Scouching on his own Scouching live show where he said that... If you put everything in a vacuum, Cooley probably should have been the number one guy. And he was very high on Cooley based off of his tracking, and I feel like he had Shane Wright at number one mostly towards the end because of reputation, more so than based off of his own evaluation, because even as earlier on as February, I'm pretty sure, he said that he probably should have had Cooley number one. But this is the entire thing that made Cooley so special. It's that combination of vision, playmaking, skills, efficiency, and point production. He is 
all the rage when it comes to a certain type of center that you're looking for in the National Hockey League nowadays. You want that guy who can become a Trevor Zegras-esque player, just dazzle your pants off and be really good in the process? Cooley looks to do that. And while he may not have the same pedigree as a Shane Wright in terms of goal scoring, in terms of the physical presence that Yuri Slavkovsky has, you can't go out there and deny that the way Logan Cooley is able to watch the game of hockey unfold in front of him and react to plays accordingly, this guy is on a level not attained by many other prospects in 2022, especially based off of what we had seen out of his NCAA stint this previous year. And heck, once 22-23, or excuse me, 22-23, once next season comes along, if Logan Cooley goes out there and completely wipes the floor with Slavkovsky in terms of point production, let's say Slavkovsky gets 35 to 40 points, Cooley gets 50, because he's given a first-line power play role with the team, and at the end of the year, he's the first-line center, he's feeding Clayton Keller all night long. If Logan Cooley outproduces Slavkovsky, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I feel like when it comes to ceiling, Logan Cooley has a more realistic ceiling of being just extraordinarily high. He's got this game-changing elite center capability in his repertoire that we're probably going to see unfold over the next decade and a bit. For Slavkovsky, I don't think it's unfair to say that he has a higher ceiling. Like, if Uri becomes the best version of himself, he could be just a game-breaking winger. Super solid, physical, presence, defensively responsible, while also getting a boatload of goals and making plays, too. Slavkovsky has the chance to do that, it's just, if I had to try to map everything out in my mind, I'd say that Uri Slavkovsky's likelihood of hitting that ceiling is lower than the likelihood that Logan Cooley hits his particular ceiling. Sure, Slavkovsky might have a higher ceiling, but I think it's more likely that Cooley becomes the best version of himself, rather than Slavkovsky becoming the best version of himself. Do you kind of get what I'm saying here? Is that making sense? I feel like when it comes to attainable ceiling, Cooley seems more projectable, Cooley seems to be growing at a steadier pace, and he seems to have gotten off to a hotter start, too. But for your eye, you can't go out there and deny one year in the NHL under his belt at 18 years old, that's already a pretty big feat. It's just in comparison to other first overall picks we have seen. We talk about this all the time, but the Yakupovs, the McKinnons, even the Nugent Hopkins, and not to mention the McDavids and the Matthews and the Hishiers and the Darlenes, these guys all had phenomenal first years in the NHL compared to Jack Hughes, Lafreniere, Slavkovsky, Owen Power. It's a little different nowadays, and that's not these prospects' fault, it's just kind of how the league has evolved the past few years. So for Logan Cooley, to be as good as he is right now and actually have this profile where he projects to maybe winning the Calder or being a challenger for that Calder with Connor Bedard, I think it's very fair to say that for now, he's the better player than Slavkovsky. You could debate, say, hey, wait a minute, Slavkovsky played the whole year in the NHL. If Slavkovsky was in the NCAA, who knows how many points that guy gets? Maybe he outproduces Logan Cooley. And that's a very fair argument, too. It's just... You can't watch Yuri Slavkovsky from 22-23 and say that guy is dominant. That guy was still learning. That guy was still learning the ropes here. For Cooley, he looked so dominant in the NCAA that if he starts his NHL career and takes over that level of success, I don't think anybody would be too surprised. I don't think it's surprising if Cooley needs time to adjust either. Like, at the same time, if Cooley has the Jack Hughes sort of treatment in his first NHL year where he's really taking time to adjust to the speed and the decision-making and he's not really getting points, okay, that's fair. That can definitely happen too. It's just... I don't know, we've seen so much good out of Cooley against men in the NCAA that it's difficult to even think about doubting that guy at this point in time. Right now, you could say that either Slavkovsky or Cooley should have been drafted first overall. You could even throw right in there if you really wanted to. But one Arizona prospect, Maverick Lamaru, did have his shot and did say that very same thing on a podcast. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of the Canadians having drafted Cooley instead of Slavkovsky first overall? Everybody said that Cooley was the guy that could have challenged Shane Wright at the beginning of 21-22. Like, heading into the year, it seemed like Cooley was the most likely challenger for first but as the Olympics and the World Championships came along, that's where Slavkovsky showed off well, and he took over the perspectives in Scout's eyes. So, very interesting conversations to be having a year after the draft. Preliminary thoughts in the comments section below about this Cooley versus Slavkovsky thing. I hope you enjoyed this Vichara Shrolls 99. 
and bye.